Hello folks and welcome back to another crafting video here at Bundu Fundi. So in this video I'm going to go through the process I took to make a heavy duty leather belt for myself. So just a quick intro, um, I like heavy duty robust gear, particularly leather wear, and it's very difficult to get hold of what I um, interpret as heavy duty, rugged, robust uh, leather goods. You know, and just, just to illustrate my point, I have got a belt here that I bought um, and it was sold as a heavy duty belt. Um, it's by an artisan maker in the UK. Lovely belt, you know, really well made. And don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the artisan at all. It's just the interpretation of heavy duty. So the one that I have made, and that's in this video, is also, you know, 40 mil, um, but it's five mil thick. Got a very big solid brass buckle. And as a comparison, you know, you, you can see the difference in the thickness. And so that's what ended up, how I ended up making my own. So I'll start by saying that I'm not a professional leather worker. Um, these crafting projects are for fun. Um, I like doing them and, you know, just sharing the ideas for anyone else who's interested in trying out some simple crafts. I stuck with a very simple process. I'm sure the professional leather workers, if any of them ever watch this, will uh, wince at some of the things I do, but, you know, I don't have all the gear. Um, but the process worked. It was very simple. There's no glue, no stitching. You know, I could replace the buckle if I need to. Um, I got the materials on Etsy fairly easily, fairly cheaply, and it all worked out really well and produced a product I'm really happy with. So if that's something you fancy giving a go and um, it interests you, then watch along. It's not going to be a long video and hopefully you'll pick up something that is of interest. So in order to keep this project super simple, I decided to buy um, belting already made, so I'm not cutting up any hide. And I got this off Etsy. And this is uh, it's five mil thick, so it's pretty thick. It's 40 mil um, wide, which is round about one and a half inch. And it's um, 45 inches long, which I thought sounded like a lot, but when I measured it against one of my other belts, it's just about exactly what my other belts are. Um, now I'm a 32, usually 31, 32 inch waist. So um, 45 sounds like a lot, but actually for a 32 inch belt, that's actually how much you need. So. Um, that was the longer option they had on the Etsy store, so they had two lengths, and this was the longer one. Now I thought it'd be more than enough, but it was only just. Um, from another Etsy shop, I got this belt buckle, and for once, it's one of the places where I, they stipulate heavy duty, and this really is very heavy duty. It's solid brass, it's pretty thick, and it actually weighs a lot. Um, it is very heavy. It's almost, I'm almost tempted to imagine it might be too big. <laughs> I don't know. Right, so I'm going to start off by shaping the ends. Um, the one end for the fold over by the buckle and the other which is the end of the belt. Um, most of the tutorials I saw on YouTube that are available actually have, most people use cutters. So they pre-shape cutters and makes the job really quick and easy. And, you know, punches for the holes and particularly the hole punch for the uh, buckle, um, which is a, an, an oblong hole. So that was all done by punches. I don't have any punches um, apart from a rotary punch and I'll be using that and my knife to cut and um, make the, the, the holes for the belt buckle. So that's what I'm moving on to next. Right, so what I've done now, I've marked off, um, I just measured off one of my other belts just to get a, an idea because obviously a lot of people use these jigs which actually automatically punch out the buckle hole and the rivet points. Um, because I'm doing it by hand, I just marked it out off another belt. So these two are the extent of the buckle um, groove and those are the two points for the um, rivet. 
Now what I'm going to do, I did mention a rotary punch, but I've actually found that I have got one of these with various sizes of punch cutter. So I'm going to use that um, size just to start off this buckle groove. I'm going to do that one first, make sure the buckle fits before I do the uh, rivet points. So I'm going to punch out the two ends and then just cut it with a knife between the two. So I'm really happy with the positioning of that now um, and what I'm going to do is just put one um, hole through this portion there and just have that screw and rivet is going to hold it. So it's very simple um, but it, it'll work. I have a belt that is made pretty much the same way and it's never failed. It's a fairly st um, sturdy bolt so I'm just going to make that hole now and then obviously before I attach everything I'm going to, um, in this case I'm probably going to dye this leather. So you could just leave it as is, and it will be quite functional like that. But um, I'm going to dye it and probably also dye the edge a, a different colour, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, but I'll need to do that before I attach this on. But um, it's turned out um, okay, doing the punching I did. It would have been obviously cleaner and neater with a buckle punch, but um, yeah, it seems to have worked out okay. So two holes punched for the rivet, and now I can move on to dyeing the leather. So one thing I also wanted to do actually before I did the, any dyeing to make sure that the holes are dyed is also to do the holes for the buckle. Um, so I just measured off one of my old belts and that's my normal hole there. So I've done one back. If I'm lucky enough to lose a bit of weight, and uh, if I'm not, then I've got another two this way. So I'll just punch those holes first and then um, I can move on to the dyeing. So, all the holes are punched now. So that's the end of the process, and this is how it looks. Um, fits me really well, and that's another advantage of making your own. You can set it to exactly the right dimensions for yourself because often it's quite difficult to gauge online, and people have different interpretations of length. It also depends on the thickness, but um, you make your own, and you can make it fit perfectly. So that's how it looks, and I'm pretty happy with that. So thanks for watching.